In this video, we'll take a look at techniques for bouncing audio in Pro Tools. The first method we'll look at is generally called bouncing to tracks. And although bouncing to tracks is not actually a menu item in Pro Tools, it is a very commonly used technique. Here you can see I have a Pro Tools session with about a dozen tracks. And currently, the mix is routed to an output bus called Mix. In order to use bounce to tracks, we'll need to route all of these tracks to an internal mix bus. So the first thing I'll do is go to the setup menu, choose IO setup, and create a new internal mix bus. In this case, I'll want one stereo bus, and we'll go ahead and call it bounce. And then I'll hit create. Now we can go ahead and close the IO setup dialog. Now I can assign all of my tracks to the new mix bus. If I simply hold down the option key on Mac or the alt key on Windows, and assign the bus to any one of the tracks, all of the tracks in the session will be routed to that bus. Now all I need is a destination for the bus, which will be a new audio track. So I'll go to the track menu, select new, and create a new stereo audio track. And we'll go ahead and name it bounce. And then I'll set its input to the bounce bus. And now we'll go ahead and switch back to the edit window. At this point, all I have to do is record arm the bounce track, make a selection to set the start and end time for the bounce, and then press record play. And then once the bounce to tracks is finished, you can go ahead and rename the bounce clip and then use the export clips as files command to export the mix with your desired settings. Some advantages to the bounce to tracks technique include the ability to make changes to the mix during the bounce process and the fact that the bounced mix will be contained inside the session. So if you need to go back to this session in the future, you'll automatically have access to your most recent mix. The next technique we'll look at is bounce to disc. To set up bounce to disc, first make sure that the mix sounds exactly the way you want it to sound in the bounce, and that no tracks are inadvertently soloed or muted. Then go to the file menu and choose bounce to disc, and the bounce dialog will appear. Here we'll choose our bounce source, which in this case is my stereo mix bus. Then we can choose one of the available file types, which include Sound Designer 2, Wave, AIFF, MP3, QuickTime, and MXF. And if you're on a Windows system, you'll also be able to choose Windows Media. Next, we choose the format. Choices here include summed mono, multiple mono, or interleaved. Typically, if you're planning to distribute your mix on CD or on an online service like SoundCloud, you'll want to choose the interleaved format. This will combine the left and right channels of the mix into a single file. Next, we can choose our bit depth. Options here include 8-bit, 16-bit, 24-bit, or 32-bit floating point. Most of the time you'll want to choose 16-bit for a CD or 24-bit for most other formats. Then we can set the sample rate, and there are a lot of options here, but most music is still produced at 44.1 kHz. And this is definitely the setting you'll want to use if you're planning to burn an audio CD. If we do choose an alternate sample rate, then we can set the sample rate conversion quality. Back in the day, it sometimes made sense to choose a lower quality conversion setting because the computer would process the file faster. With modern computers, you'll almost always want to choose Tweakhead, which will give you the best quality and will still be reasonably fast. Then you can choose from one of two conversion options, either to convert during the bounce or to convert after the bounce. Generally, you may not notice any difference between these two, but it's important to note that convert during bounce can sometimes compromise the accuracy of plugin automation. The final options here include import after bounce, which is only available if you keep the sample rate and bit depth at the same settings as a session. And then you can also choose to automatically add the bounced file to your iTunes library or to share it with SoundCloud. Now we'll click the bounce button and Pro Tools will ask us to choose a destination for the file and give it a name. Then when I click Save, Pro Tools will automatically begin the bounce to disk.
One additional note about Bounce to Disk. When using Bounce to Disk, Pro Tools will automatically bounce what it thinks is the whole session. But occasionally, it will actually bounce a much longer duration. In those cases, you can make a selection to specify the exact bounce duration, just like we did with Bounce to Tracks. The Bounce to Disk command is much easier to set up than Bounce to Tracks, but it has some limitations. The first is that you can't make any changes to your mix during the bounce process, and another is that the automation can sometimes vary from bounce to bounce. These are a couple of reasons why most experienced audio engineers prefer to use Bounce to Tracks.